And then we created our new ones. Okay. So the first step that we have to do, are we ready? The first step that we have to do, can I just highlight my variables and say, okay, so I'll build a table. I mean, build a chart. Build a chart. No, I have to put those numbers together for it first, right? I have to kind of put together a little table to then give the information to Excel to build the chart. So let's say I'm interested in looking at um, math classes and, uh, let's see, let's see what's a good one. Um, what's a good at math and sex? I think that's what we looked at, right? So the first thing I have to do, I can't go up here and say, okay, do a, um, do a chart, right? First, I'm going to have to use what? Okay, remember this is one of those times where 95% of the time, you just say this, you're going to get it right. What are we going to use? A pivot table. Okay, so insert pivot table. And let's see, I was going to use uh, sex and good at math, right? Let's do save and drop one of them over into values, right? I'm just going to clean this up. Okay, so here's my raw data. But for my charts, I like relative frequency better, right? My audience gets a better picture if they know the percentage of people that fell within that category as opposed to the actual number. So how do I change this to relative frequency? Value field settings and show values as. And for this type of pivot table, what am I going to have it calculate? percentage. It's just a regular old pivot table. I'm not doing a contingency table. I'm not looking at these percentages to compare them. I'm just putting actually what happened. What percentage fell in this category? What percentage fell in that category? Grand total. All right. So now we have the total is 100%, right? And we have the females and the males. This is the absolute frequency. So if this is if we were looking at the total 100% um, where people fell, okay. So this would be one way to demonstrate, okay. But we're going to take it a step further. What we did in the lab as well, where we want to kind of group those females and males as one bar that's 100% and break up these other categories within there, okay? So we'll see males and females. What percentage of females agreed? What percentage of females disagreed? What percentage of females strongly agreed? And we don't have any strongly, strongly disagreed, okay? So if I want my females to be 100% and I want my males to be 100%, how would I calculate? Just look at the table. Where would my females add up to 100%? If I want to have females be the whole pie, they would add up across, right? Here's my females, and here's my males. So, value field settings. Show values by percent row total. So now this adds up to 100%, right? And males add up to 100%. So if you start visualizing your bar chart, if you have females and males and have a bar for each of those females and males, you can see within that what percentage agree, what percentage disagree. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, because the pivot tables, if I build a chart directly from the pivot tables, it gets all that formatting weirdness. So I'm just going to copy my labels, right? And down here, um, I don't know if I'm going to put like that, that blue. And I, if I want, I can put the percentage here so I know that, that will be pulled into my chart. 
And then I can just type those values down here. And I'll clean it up to do how many decimal points do I want for my percentages? Two. So I'll just highlight and I'll remove one of those decimals. Okay. Then I'm going to highlight this now. Now I can insert the chart. Insert bar chart. You can see the different types. So there's that one option where I have the females and males next to one another. Oh, I mean not. I mean people do it all the time, right? It's not like you're going to go to jail for doing it this way. Right? You're not going to get arrested. But this is a lot less to look at, right? So I want this one, so I'm going to click on this, and I could switch the females and males and have them on top and have the agree to disagree on the side, right? Then I can have those females and males down here, or I can go to my filter here, select data, and just switch row and column. Now it breaks it down. Okay. So. What else do I need to add to this though? Title. I need the value labels, exactly. So I go to my little chart element and I click on the data label. There they are. And they're to one decimal point, just like I wanted. I need to get rid of those percentage signs though, huh? I don't want those there. So that's one thing I want to do. And this is where that formatting issue huh, comes up because I typed it in there. Generally, I don't want to go there. Okay, so I'd have to clean that up. Trying to do this quick here, you guys. Okay, what else do I want to clean up? Do I need a chart title or just leave it like that? Okay. Chart title, right? So maybe I'd put a relative frequency of, um, what is this, uh, math? This was, uh, I mean, about statistics. Good at math. So they're good at, good at math by set, right? Do I need. These over here, do I need this axis? Nope, I can just get rid of that, right? So I double click, backspace. Do I need the grid lines? Nope, I press here and unclick the grid lines. Okay, and I probably would like it better. I think it makes more sense. Not that. And it's a little maybe more efficient. More clear. I put my percentages here. Chart title. I would change those so this is now 45. There's 45. 16.7. 25 over 0. 45.8. 30. 55. Decimal point, so there's that consistency, right? Because I want it to be consistent. Okay. And we can move it to its own sheet. What do you think? Pretty efficient? Pretty clear. I mean, and it's basic. I mean, but we understand that, right? We're just telling what we're just telling our audience, okay, this is the breakdown for my sample. By set the responses, right? So you can see, you can see very quickly with your eyes, right? That you know a lot more females agree compared to males. Yeah, is that pretty obvious? Okay, and um, a lot more males disagree compared to females. And strongly agree. I mean, it's slightly different, but not a, not hugely. Okay, so very quickly you can get a visual. Now, could we have presented this as a table? Yeah, we could present it at the table too, um, which if we do it efficiently would convey the, the same information. This is just more, I mean, they're both visual, but not just visual the number, but it actually gives you a graphic to represent the size and the difference, right? Okay, so that's an efficient chart, right? So we're going to have, we have a title. Uh, we have one decimal point, the percentage. We have, um, we don't have percentage sign in all of these, right? We 
have it down here in the legend. We can get rid of the grid lines. We can get rid of the axis because we know it's percentage. Um, that's pretty stripped down. Okay. So I think probably the most important piece, I mean, yes, cleaning up the chart is important, but the, I mean, the really key part is to not forget you have to set Excel up first. You can't just highlight your variables and say make me a chart. You've got to kind of, you've got to do some groundwork first. So you've got to get your percentages, put them in a table, so that Excel can build them. All right? And if you build it, I mean, it's built correctly. We've got the right percentages. We're not worried about that. We've got X, female, male, Y um, for the uh, agreement. We've got our 100% across. We know our females are 100% and our males are 100%. We've built it correctly. We've got the right percentages. When we built it here, depending on how we want to see it in our chart, again, I'll show you where you can flip it. Okay, this is, um, so this is the, it's called a filter. I mean, it looks like a filter, like an oil filter, right? You're going to change your oil and you need to filter it up. Okay, down at the bottom, it's that select data. Okay, and essentially it shows you, and you can play with it even more, right? I mean, it, you are the master of Excel. You're telling it how to build it. But if I click on the switch row column, that's the easy button that flips so that here now I flipped it so my strongly agree, and within that are male and females. Now, it's not correct like this, right? It's not adding up to 100%. That'll be your clue, right? That'll be your clue. Wait a minute, this isn't really conveying good data to my audience. Um, oh, now this makes sense. This is 100%, matches my data, matches what I want to tell my audience. Okay, so that's, uh, again, that's in the filter switch data. Also here, you know, we can click on the chart and delete anything, right? You just click on it and press the delete button backspace. In the filter, you can also just click things off. Like, what if all of a sudden you're like, you know what? I don't want that disagree. I don't want disagree. And now I've removed my one of my groups. So there's a lot of ways you can really manipulate. If I wanted to just say, you know what, actually, I don't want to show a, a female male breakdown anymore. We're, we're actually targeting males for whatever. I mean, our sample include females and males, but um, I'm going to show my audience only males. And I can remove the, the females part. So anyway, that's there's a lot that can be done in the charts. Any Any questions about... Building a chart. No questions. Feel comfortable with building charts. Um, and this also means that when I see your capstone posters, your presentations. Uh, or your well, I wouldn't see a chart, but if I read your paper, I'm going to see amazing charts, right? Because now the pressure is on me because now I had all three sections of you, uh, 35 this semester. So when you all roll through capstone, you've got to have good charts, <laughs> otherwise, people are going to know it was you know, it was my responsibility, okay? So, um, okay, so that's the presenting data. And creating an efficient table, of course, is just getting the data and, you know, cleaning up and manually putting together that aggregate content. Okay? Yep, seems like you. So we, we kind of just did it a little bit where we made sure we built our table correctly, and that's really what it comes down to. Back to those rules. X, Y, Y, X. Where is my X? Where is my Y? Depending on what type of table I want to build. So let's look at, we're going to keep it easy, good, good at math and sex, insert pivot table. So if I put sex in rows, good at math in columns, 
kind of either one of the new values. I clean it up. How it's how it is set up right now. Okay, which one's my X? Which one impacts the other one? Does my agreement on whether or not I'm good at math impact my sex? No, I think sex probably impacts whether or not I think I'm good at math. So which one's the X? Sex. Which one's the Y? Good at math. So if I have X in the rows, what do I want to calculate for the percentages? Row percentages. Okay. Show values as row total. All right. Now, I'm going to do another one. In the same place. Here we go. Now let's say... I instead want column percentages. So I put my X, sex, in columns, good at math and rows, either one of them in values. I clean it up. All right. Remember the hashtags just mean it's not wide enough, so I just widen that column. Right click, value field settings. Okay, now that I have X in the columns, Y in the rows, now how am I going to calculate it? Column percentages. So here, I'm comparing these two, top and bottom. Here, they're the same numbers. Remember, that's a, that's a good check. As the, the percentages did not change, that's good. We don't want them to do. The numbers shouldn't change. They're just going to change location. So here, I'm comparing side to side. Here, I was comparing up and down. Here, side to side, here, up and down. The same percentages, though. Okay. So, again, do I expect you to memorize how to build these? Like, it's seen on the street. Hey, this is your X, this is your Y. What are you doing with that? No. Do I expect you know how to build it because you are going to look at your tools? Yes. Okay. And then what would we look for? We're looking for that difference. Is 45 pretty different from 16? Yeah. Is 25 pretty different from 45? 30 from 37? Eh, a little bit, slightly, but these other ones certainly are. And remember, you're not doing them individually. You're looking at the whole picture, the whole table. So based on these percentages, does this suggest there's a relationship or no? Yes. Yes, it suggests there, there is a relationship because 45% of females agreed compared to only 16% of males. And 45% of males disagreed compared to only 25%. Based on sex, it appears that you might be more likely or less likely to agree. More likely or less likely to disagree. That's what's suggesting there's a relationship. It might depend whether you're female or male and whether or not you agree you're good at math. That's what you're looking for, okay? And this is how you build it. Put your X in the right spot, your Y in the right spot, and then depending on where they're at, are you building a row percentage table or a column percentage and telling Excel to calculate it that way. And if you want to check your work, you, would build, you could build both of them and make sure that the percentages are the same. And then you look for the difference. If there's no difference or very small difference, that would suggest there's not a relationship. All right, and then we could do the correlation coefficient. And that was with those continuous variables. So we use math and GPA. Okay, so equals coral. Double click, highlight an array of math responses of our math classes. I like GPA. And there's the correlation coefficient. And then, of course, we assess it for strength and direction. Is it far from zero? Is it close to zero? Is it positive or is it negative? Those are what we're looking for. 
Okay. Confidence intervals. Okay, remember we used a template, right? Give our formulas. First, we had to get some descriptive statistics before we started inserting into the uh, formulas, right? My degree is freedom. My T value. Okay. What tool do I use to get my X bar, standard deviation, etc.? Pivot table. See, again, just shout out pivot table all the time. Okay. So, this was the mean of. Oh, sorry, this is the one I want to go in the data. Same data. Don't use it. So we're looking at the mean GPA, I believe. Okay. So I can highlight it, insert my pivot table, and this is the one where I'm going to drop it in values, and it's going to be that number generator on one variable. It defaults to count. Um, hold on. Oh, there were 50 in this data set. This means we need to get 50. Okay. So that is right. So this is what sample size. 50 people responded with their GPA. All right. And we can summarize values by average. Now I have my average GPA. That's my X bar. What else did I need for my template? Standard deviation. The standard deviation. Can I get that from this generator? Yes. Yep. So I just right click, value field settings, and I scroll down here, standard deviation. Now I got my standard deviation. So I can get all of those pieces from my little pivot table generator. And then degrees of freedom, n minus 1, my n was 50, so 49. Right? My confidence, 1 minus confidence, so what is that? What's my confidence level? So I'm going to be 95% confident, so 1 minus 0.95 is what? 5.05. My alpha. Remember, this was this was the start of the testing. Now we're so past that you're like, uh, 0.05, that's yes, heavy. But then, back then, we are still putting it all together. So there's the 0.05, the T value. This was our TNB. This is when we first used TNB, T-I-N-B, to get that T statistic, so I didn't have to go find a table, I didn't have to find my 0.05, my degrees of freedom would come together. I could use Excel where I would put the 0.05 as probability and my degrees of freedom, and that would give me my T score, which I'm going to use. I'm going to need for my equation, right? And then I would just insert and start calculating through this equation. Okay? And then I would add my margin of error to the X bar to get the upper level. And then I would interpret it. How do I interpret my confidence interval? You're, you're on the yes, you are correct. We're ninety five percent confident. That the mean GPA in the population is between lower level and upper level. Oh, yeah. And then for the proportion, again, we have to do some calculation, and now it's a little bit different. So maybe I'm looking at the proportion, maybe I'm interested in the proportion who strongly agree they're good at math. So I need to know what that proportion is. So again, I'm going to use my pivot table. Insert pivot table. Okay. Yes. Wait. Hold on. I'm looking at something else. Do I, what am I looking at? Now I'm, now I'm on t-test. Chi square. Hold on. Let's see. Okay. So we need the p, which is just the 1 by. That's it. It's from the grade. Okay. Go back, go back. Now I got my. Good at math. Ha ha ha. <laughs> okay, so clean it up. 
and now it's defaulting to the count. So what I did for this one, because it is a categorical variable, and it has the, we know we have people that are going to fall in agree, disagree, or strongly agree, and that each one of those are going to have a value. I can't average this, right? I can't average, if somebody said disagree, somebody said agree, what's the average? I can't average it because it's not a number. What I want is the proportion, the percentage who responded that way. So right click, value field settings, and how do I want to show values? How do I want to calculate this one with one variable? There's only one variable. Grand total, just one variable. So essentially, it's saying um, everybody who answered this question about their their level of math skills, what percentage did agree? What percentage did disagree? What percentage did strong? Okay, so if we're interested in strongly agree, what is the proportion of my sample who responded strongly agree? If this is the percentage, what's the proportion? So that's the percentage. So what is the proportion? A third? So how would I write that? It is one in three, but how am I going to write that as a proportion? One in three is a fraction, right? Is the proportion the one? A semicolon, not a semicolon, the two dots and then the three? No, no two dots. What's one divided by three? I hear it. 0.33. This is the proportion, right? Remember back to the, the formula. <laughs> Remember your P? Remember when you were doing your P's? It was a proportion, which is between 0 and 1. It's related to a percentage, right? The percentage multiplied by 100. <laughs> okay, so that's what we're looking for. So the pivot table, you know, generates the frequency for us. So the first row, so when we look at here, so for example, this example would be 0.33. We could also go back and get our sample size. So I could convert this back to no calculation. How many people responded to this question? 45. 45. There's my sample size. And my Z? What's my Z for my proportional confidence interval? 1.96. 1.96. We don't have to calculate. It's just the given. That's our Z score because we're 95% confident. And then I just plug in to the equation. And then I add the margin of error to my P to get the upper level and subtract the margin of error to my P to get the lower level. And then I interpret it. I'm 95% confident that the uh, population proportion who strongly agree to whether or not they're good at math is between lower level and upper level. Remember, it's important. Well, it's not important. It's required uh, to say in the population. Or when we do the interpretation, we're interpreting about the population. Do I need to estimate what the mean of my sample is? No, because I know what it is. I know the mean GP of my sample. I can calculate it. I got the data from them. I don't know what it is for the population. I'm estimating for them. Any questions on the confidence interval? So like this is the first time I've done the review this way where I like pulled up I square. Okay. We do our hypothesis, right? We just talked about that. There is a relationship between X and Y in the population. There is no relationship between X and Y in the population. Two categorical variables. Okay. Sex and um level of agreement on whether or not you're good at 
okay, two categorical variables. We write our, our hypothesis, right? Then for Kai, we need the observed data. How many people who were male agreed? How many females agreed? So what am I going to use? A pivot table, right? Insert pivot table. Let's do a new worksheet. Okay. All right. We're we doing chi squared. Okay. So I'm going to put, let's see, uh, it, it doesn't sex. I mean, we still have to build it correctly, but it doesn't matter if we want to do column percentage or row percentage. And um, two day appointment. This is the two day appointment one regarding advising. Okay, so I clean it up. Do blank. Okay, so here is my. Here is my observed data, right? This is actually what I got from my sample. Five females agreed and eight males agreed. This is the observed data. Okay. And recall that um, we pulled it out, right? Because we're going to use it. So we pulled it out of the, the formatted pivot table. Okay. And then we needed to calculate the observed data. I mean, sorry, the expected data. How many females would we expect to agree if there was no relationship between uh, satisfactory number of appointments and sex? So we would do female, male, and have the uh, categories on the top. So we're just building another table. Okay, how did I calculate the expected number of females who agree? Equals marginal row total times column marginal total. Put the parentheses and what do I divide by? The grand total. Remember this? Remember you did it? You had to do it for our data, then you had to do it for your data. We would do the same thing, and you know we we could build it where we have the um, absolute, so we can pull it across down. <laughs> All right, and we would get the expected data. All right, and here we would do. This divided by the grand total. Function F. Function F. And polygons. Okay. And clean it up. Now I've got everything I need. I've got my observed data. I've got the expected data. Now, what function do I use in Excel to get my p value for chi? I heard it. I heard the mumblings of it. What function do I use for the chi square test? Chi, the chi square test equals chi square. And double click on chi square test. It gives me the prompts again. I highlight my actual data, not the totals, comma, highlight the expected data, enter. There's my key. So if my p value is my p value greater than or less than 0 0.05? Greater than. Greater than. So jump to our ultimately high level statistic interpretation. So what kind of findings did we get? Statistically significant. Is it or is it not? No. It's not statistically significant because it's a really high p value. It's not less than 0.05. It's not statistically significant because it's not statistically significant. We are not able to reject or not, right? Okay, so we're not able to reject our null. Therefore, what is our conclusion? There's no relationship between x variable and y variable in the population. Okay, that's our conclusion. 
that's time. Any questions? Want to talk about tea? <laughs> You're like, no, we don't want to talk about tea. Hmm. Well, I'm going to talk about it. Okay, so I'm going to walk through it. It's 11.30. We're fine. We're fine on time. Um, and then after I walk through tea really quickly, then, you know, I open up for questions, the whole class, and then I can also walk around if you have any questions about the material, about your labs, etc. Um, I have a question. Yes. Are you going to have our last lab corrected yes, before absolutely. the final? Okay. Yes, yes. Before, definitely before Monday. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, maybe today. <laughs> yes. How many points is the final? Um, I believe it's 30. So it's more than the mid-test. Okay. Let's talk about T-test. Should be somewhat familiar in less than a week. Remember now, this is looking at those groups within your data. So within the CHHS students, the average male GPA and the average female GPA. In my sample, they're different, but are they different in the population? Right? For us, we are assuming that we're going to do a type 2 and a type 3 test. We don't have matched data. We don't know what the variance is in the population, so we're going to do type 2 and type 3. All right. <coughs> okay, so we're looking at GPA and sex. The first thing we had to do is just gather what the average GPA is for the females and the average GPA for males. What tool am I going to use? Pivot table. Insert pivot table, and now we're going to put sex in rows, GPA in values, okay? And this gives our count, how many females there were in my sample and how many males there were in my sample. Do you recall if I need that or not? We do. We need that, okay? We need our sample sizes. And I'm not going to pull up the whole template, again, we just did it on Wednesday, but I'm just showing you how we gather the data that we need. Again, I would want the, I would need the average, right? Summarize values by average. Now I have what the average GPA in my sample is for females, and the average GPA for um, males in my sample. And then I'd also want the standard deviation, which again, value field settings, scroll down standard deviation. And we just did somewhat similar stuff um, for confidence. So there's the data. Okay, and then I would use a TINV function with my probability being 0.05 and my degrees of freedom. Degrees of freedom. Then I would use my And remember the T test. Remember the T test formula. You see, I don't think I'll make that work. But if you can see, this is where I would have had to sort my data. So I had my male GPAs grouped together, my female GPAs grouped together, and I would highlight the males and the females, whichever group one is. Then I would tell how many tails, how many tails, two, and then I would tell which test I'm doing. You take type two. And then do type three. <coughs> All right? And then I do one more step, and that's the like, TINV again. And this time I use my P value as the probability and my degree of freedom. And again, in this PowerPoint slides, it's all in steps, right? Step by step by step, and slides talking about how to do it in Excel. And then we interpret it. So we provide what we found in our sample. In, in our sample, male average male GPA was 2.5, which was lower than the average female GPA, 3.5. However, 
with a t test assuming equal variance, this difference was what was found not to be statistically different, right? And again, you have your templates. Should you use your templates or should you just make something? Just reinvent the wheel? No, don't reinvent the wheel. Use the templates every time, just like we were talking about confidence intervals interpretation. Do the slides have the, the template for um, interpreting those? Yes. Okay. Okay. So that's the T test. That's where we got. That's the peak of our work. Okay. So um, it is 1140. So <coughs> I will end up here. Unless, do, do, does anybody have any questions like overall? Because otherwise, I can you can ask me individual questions as well, too. All right, so don't forget your extra credit. Don't forget your final. Please don't forget. We're not done. You're not, don't check out the class yet. You still have your final.